Welcome back to section 2, Crafting Game Assets. Within this section, we will learn about free online assets and how to utilize them, how to model both a low and high poly version of an asteroid, how to bake the high poly detail onto a low poly object, and then finally modeling a spaceship from scratch. In this video, we will be going over free online assets and when it's suitable to use them. Throughout this video, we will go over the basics of licensing, the website BlendSwap and OpenGameArt, and then finally the differences between creating your own custom assets and using the free ones online. The first point we will go over is the basics of licensing. Whenever you acquire or download a model, texture or sound file, you must always seek license information on that specific file. Each file will have one license associated with it telling you what you can and cannot do with that resource. If you cannot find this information, it is important that you contact the author and ask for direct permission to use that resource. If you do not get permission or violate the terms of the license, then this can result in potential legal action against your creative work. It is important in this case that you always seek permission to stop these sort of complications from happening further down the track. The most common licenses you will find online are the Creative Commons license and all of the different derivations. Here we have the main five derivations of the Creative Commons license. The first license type is CC0. This basically means no restrictions on the free asset. You can use it for commercial, personal or any other type of projects, and you do not need to give credit. The next type is CCBY. This means you must give attribution to the author which you are using that resource from. This can be done either in the credits, on the screen, or somewhere else where you acknowledge where these assets come from. The next derivation NC means non-commercial. This means that you can use the asset for any type of personal projects, but you cannot use it in a commercial setting. Below this we have the CCND license. This stands for No Derivatives, and basically means that you cannot distribute a remixed or changed version of the original file. It must stay the same if you want to distribute it. In this case, it applies to commercial and non-commercial projects. The last derivation is the share alike license. In this case, any work that uses this asset that has been licensed under share alike must have any derivations or anything you make with it shared under the same license. This means if you make a game, a movie or an image using this asset, you must again share that image, movie or asset using the same license. Quite often for a model, you might see different combinations of all of these licenses put together. For example, CCBYND or CCNCSA. In this case, you have to apply multiple terms to the current license. For example, share alike and non-commercial. They will both apply to the same asset. In the case where it is CC0, it cannot have any other derivations as CC0 means the asset is free to use in any context. Now that we know the basics of licensing, we can move on to the websites where we will get our assets from. Here we have the popular website blendswap.com. In this case, it is specific to Blender and usually just contains models or demos. Any sort of files that are on here are always in the format of a blend file. This means it can be very easy to just download a file and open it up directly within Blender. You do not need to import any modules or import anything else. The website itself is very modern and easy to use. However, contrary to the name, you do not actually need to swap any sort of Blend files. That is just the name of the website. Generally, you can just create a new account and then download any Blend files you wish. Underneath each of these assets is a heart symbol to indicate the rating and quality of a model. However, again, because this is free to use for anyone, there is no high quality guarantee for any of the models. The next website we will look at is opengameart.org. 
Here we have a wealth of information on models, textures, sound effects, music and much more. The website itself is fairly old and has quite an old design. However, it is still simple to navigate and can be easy to find lots of very useful assets. In this case, the website does not have a rating system and does not have a high quality guarantee. To determine the quality of an asset, you will need to look at the images, the number of downloads, and the comments below the asset. So now that we know all about the free assets and how to download them, we need to think about for our project which assets we need to create and which assets we can just download. In general, a free asset is a good option if you are running low on time or need some sort of placeholder. It requires no work and is fairly easy to implement. The downside is that you need to refer to all of the different licenses for each of the assets that you are using. On top of this, the style in which a model has been created can be very different to the style that you intend for your game. In this case, a free asset is not such a good option, as most of the time you will need to recreate it. There is also no quality assurance or guarantee that the model is optimized for a game. On the other hand, we have custom assets which you create for your own game. These have two very strong points. The first one is the style of the asset fully matches the theme, as you are able to customize it in a way that you envisioned in the first place. The second major advantage is that all rights of the asset belong specifically to you. This means you do not need to worry about licensing as the rights belong to you and you can determine under which license your game is released. The downside to this is that you are limited to your own skill. If you aren't very good at using Blender, then the models you create won't be very good either. Secondly, it also takes a long time and lots of work to create assets from scratch, especially if you may not be keeping them permanently. In general, it can be a good idea to use free assets when you are running low on time, and it can be a good idea to use custom assets when you have extra time to spend creating those assets and making them match the style perfectly. Now that we know all about free online assets, 